Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this part two of the electric field of a polarized object, or finding the electric field of a polarized object, we are gonna look at a specific example and use the equations for bound surface charge and bound volume charge densities to calculate the electric field that is induced by an external electric field. Mind blowing, right? and also super cool. Okay, so like a lot of classic physics problems, it's deceptively simple on the outside. So, the, the question at hand is find the electric field of a uniformly polarized sphere of radius r. Okay, so we're gonna draw a picture first. Yay, pictures! So, our sphere has radius r. Whoopsies, that's not a vector. That's just a distance. Yay, distance. Okay, so capital R, and it is uniformly polarized with a uh, uh, capital P, uh, which is, again, the polarization or the dipole moment per unit volume. Okay, so where do we start? Well, we need a coordinate system, and we want to be lazy. So we're going to pick the z-axis to be in the same direction as the polarization. Um, the polarization could have been drawn this way or this way or down or into the board. It's a sphere, remember, three dimensional. But I can draw it however I want because the problem didn't specify. And also because the coordinate systems are our choice, we want to be lazy and pick a coordinate system that makes our problem easier to solve. So same direction as the polarization vector. Okay, so we have our coordinate system. Next, um, we want to uh, start to make some, uh, start to use what we have to cross some things out. So first of all, because the polarization is uniform, that means that the volume bound charge is zero. If it was non-uniform, it would not be zero. Okay, so then uh, the next thing that we want to do is calculate the surface charge density. So sigma bound um, equals the polarization dot the surface vector. When you have a dot product, it pulls out that component um, uh, and the angle between them. Oops, we should specify that that is theta. Okay, so uh, p cosine theta and the magnitude of a, of a unit vector is one. So that is, uh, that's it. So now we want the field that is produced by the charge density uh, of the polarization times cosine theta on the surface of a sphere. Hey, wait a second, we have this already, remember? We're kind of back to electrostatics, even though we have, like, even though the <laughs> we're dealing with polarization, the end result is pretty much the same. Surface charge density and volume charge density. So let's be lazy and look it up. Turns out um, that the uh, potential due to a surface charge density uh, depends on these two. That's an R, not a tiny v. Um, so we have two conditions. One is inside the sphere. Um, so uh, again, with a surface charge density of this, we would substitute that into previous findings for surface charge density potential um, or potential due to a surface charge density. Uh, and then we get this for R is less than the radius of the sphere inside the sphere. And outside the sphere, we end up with polarization over 3 epsilon naught, uh, radius cubed over r squared. I think my dog is trying to get in. That's funny. It's like, who's opening the door? It's probably Marley. Um, times cosine theta for r greater than or equal to the radius. Okay. And so using geometry, we also know that um, z equals r cosine theta. So again, because the polarization is uniform, the electric field inside the sphere is uniform. So um, 
or r plus than r inside the sphere, we can find the electric field by calculating the um, gradient of the potential. We just plug this in. We have a negative sign, um, p over 3 epsilon naught, and we substitute r cosine theta. Um, with, we substitute z for r cosine theta, um, and the, uh, uh, the, the gradient of this, um, or d dz of z, is just 1. Um, so we end up uh, with just the z direction. All of the other components cancel because z is the only um, variable that we have. And so uh, because the polarization vector is in the direction of the z-axis, we actually can just take out z hat. I guess that should have a little leg on the bottom. Um, and take out z hat and just specify that this is in the electric field is in the direction inside the sphere um, opposite to the polarization vector. Uh, I think, uh, oh yeah, okay. I didn't finish my equation. I got so excited about what it means. Um, and again, for r less than r. Okay, cool. So we'll come back to that in one second. And so for r greater than or equal to r, we have um, that the potential is identical to that of a perfect dipole at the origin. Um, so given this form, um, not. So the perfect dipole at the origin potential um, uh, is equal to this, where this is the dipole moment, dot r hat over r squared. And so we set these equal to each other, da, 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 da. so the polarization, whoops, that's not a vector yet, um, over 3 epsilon naught big R cubed over little r cosine, little r squared, cosine theta. Okay, so um, uh, this is going to give us the dipole moment dot r is going to give us um, p r cosine theta. Um, so, oh wait, that's a unit vector, so just p cosine theta. So the cosine thetas are going to cancel. Um, the r squares are going to cancel, the epsilon naughts are going to cancel, uh, and we want to solve for the dipole moment. Um, so we end up with the dipole moment, we move 4 pi over, equals the polarization, it has a little leg on the bottom, it's not the dipole moment, it's the polarization. Um, wait, hold on, let's put our constants first. Okay, so we have 4 over 3 pi r cubed times the polarization vector. Um, okay, that's it. So that is our dipole moment. Yay! Okay, so now the question is, how do these equations tell us what the electric field looks like? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. This one's just a constant, um, and it, again, points opposite to the direction of the polarization. So we can draw field lines inside the sphere, like so. Do, 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 do. Outside the sphere is a little more complicated, but if you were to plot it, um, you would plug this back into this equation um, for the potential. Um, you would end up with lines that kind of look like this. They bend more as you go around. Um, you probably need to solve these separately. Oh, we're going to run into our equations. I guess that one is pretty straight. That one's pretty straight. That's our curve. And the more, the closer you get to the edges, the more it curves like so. Um, okay, and so these actually point like this, away from the sphere. And these lines down here point into the sphere. So it's really interesting because it's kind of like the sphere is like plopped down onto a, a field. Um, like plop down on top of the field. Pretty cool. Okay, so not so bad. And again, what I really, really love 
is that we can leverage work from electrostatics to start to answer questions about polarization, which is a super cool problem in the real world. This actually happens and we can figure it out. Ah, yay. Okay, so I hope that this example problem was helpful um, and that now you know how to be lazy and use prior work to find the electric field of a polarized object. Yay! Super cool. So again, remember, bound charges focus on the surface charge density and the volume charge density. You got this. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!